Good morning, everyone. And once again, our entrance antiphon. Turn your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Save the servant who trusts in you, my God. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The Lord uh, challenges us in the gospel today to be ready, to be awake, to uh, open our eyes to see his presence, not just at the end of time, but all throughout our lives. God is always uh, trying to enter into our lives through every circumstance and every situation. So let us ask God for that, that awareness and that desire to see him, to open our eyes, uh, to welcome him into our lives. Lord, we praise you for the many uh, ways that you wish to speak to us, to be with us, to show us your love. Help us to uh, welcome you into our lives at each moment. We pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We have been reassured about you, brothers and sisters, in our every distress and affliction through your faith. For we now live if we stand firm in the Lord. What thanksgiving then can we render to God for you, for all the joy we feel on your account before our God? Night and day, we pray beyond measure to see you in person and to remedy the deficiencies of your faith. Now, may God himself, our Father, and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus. With all his holy ones, amen. The word of the Lord. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. And may the gracious care of the Lord and God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Mm -hmm. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Who then is the faithful and prudent servant whom the master has put in charge of his household to distribute to them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on his arrival finds doing so. Amen, I say to you, he will put him in charge of all his property. But if that wicked servant says to himself, my master is long delayed, and begins to beat his fellow servants, eat and drink with drunkards, the servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish him severely and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. The older I get, the more experience I have in life, and especially as a priest, the more I truly believe, the more deeply I believe that God is good, God is loving, God is powerful. But also, the more I come to realize that God is mysterious, just cannot figure God out. And I would even go so far as to say that God is really really sneaky. God is sneaky. And I think in some ways that's what Jesus is saying in this gospel. In in the gospel of Matthew chapter 24, from which this gospel was taken, Jesus is talking about the end times, lots of different uh, uh, things that are combined in this one chapter, the end of the world, the end of uh, the temple in Jerusalem, and so on. Uh, But this particular gospel, I think he's primarily referring to the end of of time, the end of the world. But I can think it can be applied really to our entire lives, not just the end of our lives or the end of the world, but every day. And basically, Jesus says, God is sneaky. He breaks into like a thief. A thief breaks into your home or into your car and steals something. And so God, like a thief, breaks into our lives at an unexpected time, uh, through unexpected circumstances or situations, and in and through unexpected people. So often when uh, we think we're doing fine, something happens all of a sudden, out of our control, the pandemic or some other sickness or an injury or a relationship that just goes uh, sour. And God, is not that God, like I've said many times, God does not cause evil. He does not want evil. But he utilizes everything that happens in our lives, particularly the difficult times, to break into our lives. He has the power to use those difficulties to help us grow, to help us become more the people he wants us to be. So when you and I are struggling, when something happens we cannot control, we're not expecting, again, whatever it might be, just think, just believe, just know that God is somehow, that sneaky God is there. He is just waiting for you to open up your eyes, to see him in that person you never would have thought God had anything to do with. In that situation you think is just totally beyond any redemption, our sneaky God is right there. He's going to help you if you allow him to, to get through it, to see him, 
to uh, somehow utilize this opportunity for growth. God is really, really sneaky. And if we continually do that each day to say, God, whatever happens today, help me to see you, uh, whether it's good times or bad times, just to trust that you are there with me and somehow speaking to me through this person, through this situation, through this difficulty. Help me to believe that. If we do that, if we really practice that every day, then we'll be ready for the end of our lives. We'll be ready for the, ready for the end of the world. It doesn't matter because we have developed that, that readiness, that awakeness, that alertness, that ability to detect God's presence in every person, in every situation in our lives that we encounter. We now stand and offer our prayers to the Lord this morning. Lord, you are mysterious, but you are mostly good and loving. Help us even when we cannot understand, when we cannot figure you out, when we are struggling to accept a situation in our lives, to truly trust and believe that you are with us, that you can use this difficulty to bring us closer to you, to help us grow in our lives. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are struggling in so many ways in our world, those who are suffering from the fires locally, from the floods, from earthquakes and hurricanes throughout our world, natural disasters, those who are suffering like places in places like Afghanistan, which, again, just the incredible suffering that's there. Again, we ask God for your grace to bring about healing, restoration, and help, uh, but also give those people faith and strength. We pray to the Lord. We pray uh, for uh, the ability to uh, open our hearts to God more fully each day in our lives, to see him in every person and in every situation. We pray to the Lord. <clears throat> our Mass this morning is especially offered f uh, for Dolores Cruz in Thanksgiving. I believe that's my godmother, Dolores Cruz. So uh, whatever she's thanking God for, we join her in giving thanks. We pray to the Lord. And in a few moments of silence, let us offer to God our personal needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, we thank you for your ever-present love and goodness that is with us at each moment, especially in the difficult times. May we continue to grow in our trust in you. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. I invite you to join me in singing number 434 in your books, You Are Near, 434, 434. Oh Lord, I know you are near, standing always at my side. You guard me from the foe, and you lead me in ways everlasting. Once again, O oh Lord, I know you are near, standing always at my side. You guard me from the foe and you lead me in ways everlasting.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, and that we ourselves might be acceptable to our loving and almighty God. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of your spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. I'm in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, 
we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Dominic, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now we join together and pray in the words that Jesus, our Savior, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Now let us carefully offer to each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. My brothers and sisters, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And once again, we'll say the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my soul. I embrace you as if you were already there. 
and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace, proclaiming the gospel by our lives.